Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network, where entrepreneurs learn, network, and grow. I'm Roger Killen, the organizer. This evening, Sherry Knight is going to help us to get high impact testimonials. Uh, Sherry, I've got three questions that will help us get to know you a little bit better. First question is, what fun fact would you like us to know about you? Well, there's a few, but one of them is that I've flown an airplane, which nobody expects to know about me. You've flown an airplane? Yes. Pray tell what size? A small piper. Oh, I'm relieved. Push. <laughs> <laughs> Good okay, number question number two. What item on your bucket list excites you the most? Well, interesting, because I don't have a bucket list. I've been very fortunate in my life. However, if I looked at one thing when you asked that question, it would be, I've, I've spoken on every continent except Antarctica, so it would be fun to go to Antarctica and, and speak there. Yes, it would. You would have an interesting audience too. Uh, yeah, penguins. And question number three, what's the best piece of advice anyone has ever given you, personal or business? The best piece of advice. What is the best use of my time right now? That has saved me minutes and hours of tearing my hair out. Oh, okay. What's the best use of your time right now? That's a very, very profound question. Thank you for sharing that. Okay, participants, uh, please, if you would, turn on your video. It's uh, Sherry is going to get her energy from you. And whenever she has to look at a, at a black rectangle with a name in it, it isn't particularly energizing. So if you can, please come on camera. Uh, stay muted and uh, type whatever questions you've got into the chat. I'll uh, collect the questions, batch them, and then I'll pose them uh, to Sherry at about every 10 minute intervals. Rest assured, you'll get your questions answered. Now you're going to be sent a link to the recording of Sherry's talk uh, tomorrow. Uh, but I encourage you nevertheless to take notes because simply the very act of taking notes is going to help you with your absorption of the content. If you are hearing impaired, when you look at the, uh, at the buttons at the bottom of your screen, you'll see a new button. It'll be called uh, CC, standing for closed captions, and might be called transcript. But if you click on that, you can activate it. And that way you'll be able to read what Sherry is saying uh, as opposed to listening to what Sherry is saying. Sherry, are you ready to knock our socks off? I hope so. <laughs> then if you would like to uh, bring up your slides. Your screen. We'll do this. We'll see. I will remove myself. Sure. And that way, the show is completely yours. Just trying to get us here. Let's see. All right, here we go. All right, okay, take it away. About this. Thank you. Really pleased to be here. And, and the reason that I suggested this topic to Roger is because there's so much need today in terms of testimonials. And, and that's critical because individuals really want to know what you can do. And so that's the testimonial. But regardless of that, you want good testimonials because you can get all kinds of them. And some of them aren't as good as others. But re regardless of that, okay, now what's happening? Uh, there we go. So these are the things I want to talk about. Um, as I said, all kinds of testimonials, but some of them are absolutely useless. There's not much you can do with them. Um, the value, it's worth a lot of money to get that one good testimonial that you can put on your website that you can use in all kinds of different places. So which ones are worth using? I'm going to show you a few that are, are good and better and best kind of thing. And then we'll talk about how do we get great ones and then what do we do with them? Absolutely critical for that. 
little bit of background about myself. I work with a lot of small businesses. My background is corporate, working with a lot of uh, large corporations. But then I decided to do that shift, et cetera, to the coach, the trainer, and the business developer over a number of years. And so what's a not so valuable one? Here we go. Somebody that said, you know, Sam's terrific. Really, really like him. Well, that's wonderful that you do, but it doesn't tell us anything that Sam can actually take and use and let other people know. Because let's face it, uh, you know, we've got many women here. We, of course, were raised from a perspective of you don't gloat, you don't, you know, blow your own horn, etc. Men, not so much, but still, you want something that you can take and get your teeth into. So here's a few that might be coming your way that yes, it's nice to have, it really helps us feel good, but it doesn't do anything in terms of building our business. And so why? Well, because they're of no value, they're not going to promote your business. And I love the cat picture here, like, really? And that's how sometimes we feel in terms of what we get from the actual testimonials. So here's the different things. They are a public tribute. There's something that you can share with other people. And sometimes it's your peers. Sometimes it's to get new business, et cetera. But you can get them in so many different ways. And I heard somebody earlier talk about BNI. And with BNI, one of the ways you get referrals is, or you give referrals, is by it, the written testimonial. And you put those on Google, et cetera. But today we have the access to have video as opposed to just written. And of course, we can have audio. And when you look at them, you can have them in a lot of different ways. So here's the reason that you want them. It helps you, but here's a really critical one. It increases your revenue by up to 62% and 32 more conversions from that 62%. So it's actually quite critical. And, and in fact, there was uh, a study that was done by a fellow by the name of Weisel. And his research indicated that 87% of marketers be, um, believe that a video will offer a better return on investment than a video using images without telling the story. So there you go. Make sure you tell the story. And that's what you want from your clients. So here's a testimonial. And it gives you an idea of what people have done without any guidance. Okay. Yes, I'm a, an incredible coach. I really appreciate that. Uh, grateful. Yeah, she is because we were able to take her business and grow it. But the important thing here is she, she has the ability to bring light to what's important. Okay. Followed so that you get the next steps, really good. But it doesn't tell us what those steps were. It doesn't tell us what the, the light was. And so, yes, I can use this. There's certain segments that I can use, but as a whole, it's missing some things. So, you know, at the end, she had things to do, et cetera. I held her to the, you know, feet to the fire kind of thing. That's great. But the reality is what do we want from it? And so, the types of testimonials that we talked about. Written and video are actually the best. And today, people like video. But here's the thing. I got some video testimonials. And in one, the individual was going this way. Every time they made a conversation in terms of the video, they were rocking back and forth. I couldn't use it. So you, you want to make sure that you give a few directions. One, is the lighting good? Are they sitting in a place where there's decent light so they can actually give you something. Sit still. Don't bounce around on your chair, whatever that happens to be, backwards, forwards, sideways, etc. You want them hopefully to watch what the background is. The plainer, the better. I have seen backgrounds that have been windows, and those are wonderful, except when the sun's coming through, all you see is the sun. You don't see the individual, and what you're after in a video is their face. And for the written ones, similar kind of thing. They write them out. They do a really good job in terms of the information. But what is it that you want them to do with it? And so think about it. What's the business that you are in? 
actually sit down and jot notes about the kinds of business that you are, the kind of business that you have, and what it is that you would like them to be doing with that testimonial as they give it to you. Do you want them to comment on the fact that, you know, you've helped them with X, uh, X number of dollars? Do you want them to have a, a thinner body, a flatter stomach? Do you want them to have a better book? What is it that you are after that you are going to be able to focus on that you want to be able to share with other clientele? How do you want to go about doing that? And then when do you ask? Most people wait until something really good happens before they ask. Then all of a sudden, you're asking your client to start to think about who might be out there. A better option would be to let them know when they hire you. So you've got the contract signed, everything's going forward. And so now you're starting to tell them, here's the process that we are going to go through. You probably told them before that they hired you, but now you're going to tell them again. So this is what you can expect. Here's how we go about it. And oh, by the way, in the next three months, I'm going to come to you sometime during that time. And I'm going to be asking you, if you're happy with what we're doing, would you please give me a referral? Somebody that I can go on and talk to later because at that time, I'm looking for a testimonial from you. So don't wait until the very end get something going at that particular time so that it's not a shock. It's the same kind of thing when you're talking about pricing with a, a prospective client. You know, when you all of a sudden come up with the price and they go, oh, you have an idea of what their thinking is. But if you give them some idea ahead of time, you know, you know, you might think pricing is high and I'm not the cheapest one in the, the book kind of thing. You've given them an idea about that. The same kind of thing when you're wanting testimonials. Let them know that you will be asking for one. And then again, of course, after a solution. And you don't have to wait until the final solution because you will have developed with them some idea of what it is that they're after in terms of Perhaps it's dollars and cents. Perhaps it's, as I said before, perhaps it's a, a weight. And so if it's 25 pounds, you're not going to go zero to 25 pounds. You might go zero to five, five to 10, 10 to 15. And then you decide where amongst all of that is where you want to ask for a testimonial. And maybe from that particular client, you get three or four different testimonials based on the different things that you are doing and working with them. Very, very important from that perspective. Now, sometimes I heard somebody say, I'm just getting into this. I have a new business here. If you have no customers, that's okay. Then perhaps you find somebody who will want your particular service or your particular product and you give them something and you say, here's X, Y, Z, and I am willing to give this to you if you will provide me with a testimonial when we are finished with this. And so get your family, get your friends, get your you know, business connections, get those people out there who want to have what you've got. The only explanation back and forth is I would require from you a testimonial. Now, somebody was earlier talking in terms, I think it was uh, in reference to going and doing public speaking. And many times you'll do public speaking for free because that's what gives you the experience. There's nothing for free when you're doing it for no dollars. That's when you say, one of the things that I would like at the end is testimonial from you, something that I could use to promote the fact that I'm speaking. So various ways of incorporating it into exactly what it is that you do. Now, sometimes people want to give you an anonymous testimonial. Don't be afraid to take it. Take it but ask if you can use perhaps the industry that they're in. Perhaps you can use the title that they have. Maybe you can use their initials as opposed to a name. 
converse with them, find out what it is, why do they want it to be anonymous, and then try and work around that to get something with it. And if it's anonymous, they're certainly not going to give you a photograph. That's just not going to come. And so that's okay for you. Perhaps it's a case of looking at it from the perspective of these are my, and you may be put that right on your website. These are my anonymous testimonials, people who, for whatever their reason is, want to be on their own. So generally, we want the customer to write their own testimonial. And it's a really great idea if they're going to do that. Here's the thing, though, that gets to be very, very challenging in terms of them doing their own. Sometimes you can't use them because they're that useless one. There's not enough information there. And if you think that's the case, number one, they don't have time. Number two, they don't have perhaps good English because that's an important part. You don't want anybody, especially if they're willing to put their name to it, you certainly don't want them to appear in writing with something that says, gee, I'm not quite proficient in this. And so that's when you might send to them and say to them, you know, I know you're really busy, Sherry. What can I do here to help? Perhaps if it is a case of I send you a, a written testimonial, and then you can proof it, you can have a look at it, etc. And then send it back to me with any changes that you might see, or if you feel it's okay, then maybe you just sign it and send it back to me. That's a situation that makes a very, very good testimonial if you need to get one and they'll, we'll, they'll let you do it for them. And it's interesting because many people who tell you they will give you one don't. And it's generally because they don't have time, not because they're not happy with what you've done, but they don't have that time. So get busy practicing and writing out testimonials for yourself, thinking about the key things you want mentioned in it so that you've got a few of those ready to send. And my suggestion would be if you have asked somebody to send you one and you haven't heard from them for a week to two weeks, that's when I would send them another email that says, gee, haven't heard from you, Sherry. Would you be kind enough to have a look here because I took the privilege of writing something out and you can make whatever edits you want or you can just sign it and send it back to me. Sherry, are you open to a question? Always, you betcha. Uh, could you say the anonymous testimonials are more candid because they are anonymous? If so, would that give more weight or not? Generally, it doesn't if they won't give you any kind of information that you can relate to, i.e. Uh, it's acceptable if it's just a uh, letters, you know, KB for, uh, you know, K Kitty Bomahawk, whatever. If they'll give you something or a title or the industry, if they'll give you something like that that you can use, it has more credibility. If it's totally anonymous, it has less credibility because there's a feeling, true or not, there's a feeling out there that, oh, you just wrote this yourself and put it up. So be cautious. Try to get as much as you can. Okay. Thank you. No further questions. Back to you, Sherry. Okay. Thank you. All right. And so this business about writing them, here's another testimonial. You can read this through. So what it says is about enthusiasm, support, guidance. That was very valuable, okay? Astute observations of the workplace interactions, valuable. Ability to discuss successes, valuable. Potential issues, okay? And then become more a more effective leader. Provided me with organizational skills, I need to keep my momentum going. Those are valuable things. Oftentimes, I do not take the whole testimonial. Sometimes I will only take a segment out of the testimonial because then I get to use it in different places. So if I'm wanting to talk to somebody about, for instance, uh, time management, I might look at this and go in terms of organizational skills, keep my momentum going through the day, then that might come out and I might use that. 
So one of the important aspects is always to be conscious about what it is that you want. I was not conscious of this at this particular time. And so even though there are things here that I can use, there could have been more. Had I have been knowledgeable about doing testimonials, I would have had more information there. That's one concept. And here's another that's very, very important. You want to get a consent form so that you can use it however you want. Now we talk about photos and how you're probably not going to get a photo from an anonymous person. But one of the things you always want to ask for is a photo. Because if you have to go and look them up on Facebook or on LinkedIn or on their website, sometimes you're not going to get the kind of photo that you want. And so ask for a photo from them and get them to put their name on it, i.e. sign it and date it and send it back to you. Now, some people are very, very good with tech stuff. They have this that's a fill in the blank and then you just click and it sends it to you. I'm not that good. I have to send them this as an attachment. I'm hoping that they will print it out. I'm hoping that they will sign and get it back to me. So very, very valuable in terms of this because if anybody ever comes back to you in the future, you've got this piece of paper that says, yep, I've got permission to use it. And that really important part is any or all. I can use whatever segment I want out of it. Oh. Jerry, open to another question. You bet. Uh, in the email, the covering email to your request for a testimonial, can you simply state, I intend to use this for? Uh, yes, you can state it. As, a, as, well, as opposed to struggling to get a consent form back. Uh, yes, you can state it. The discrepancy would be, if somebody ever came after you, and to be to be honest, in 40 some years, I've had nobody ever come after me, nobody. And I use testimonials in all kinds of different places, but it is possible. And we know that today is a different day than the past was. So that's the reason I, that I suggest a consent form. However, do the other with the hopes that nothing ever happens, but make sure that you have when you save it, make sure that you've got who it was to and the date and all those kinds of things with the email so that you've got proof that it was sent and you then have the right because they haven't said no. Great, thank you. No further questions? Good, good question, that one, you bet. All right. I, I, I heard from a lawyer about this, that any email exchange is as good as a contract. So if you save your email exchange, that gives you, if you have permission in your email, that's as good as any form. I, I don't disagree with you. I would just like to caution on the, uh, the air of, let's make it easy for you. Sure. You don't need Thank anybody you. eventually coming back to you. So good comment. All right. So these are the kinds of things that I suggest that you might want to collect from people. Their first name, their last name. Do make sure that you get it printed because you can't read everybody's writing. So if it comes via email, etc., then you know you've got it. But if you're doing a video, you won't necessarily have the correct spelling for the name or the last name. So very important. Always helpful if you can get the title. Always helpful if you can get a photo. Always helpful if you can get the company name and the company logo. And one of the things you want to think about, and this comes from the people that I use in terms of my website, because many times you will have something from somebody that's great, and then they move. You know, they move companies, they move to uh, starting a different business than they had before. There, there's all kinds of things that happen to us as human beings. And so when we look at those kinds of things, you get to make the decision apparently from what I'm told as to which way you'd like to go about it. And in some cases, I might say somebody's retired from such and such a company. Uh, another time I might say previously with 
such and such a company. And other times we just leave it as it is, even though they're no longer there or they've passed away or they've moved someplace else because it has been accepted and proven that they were there at one time. So your choice in terms of how you might go about and using that, but do make sure that you collect everything you possibly can in terms of the organization. Many companies will not allow you to use their logo. Some companies will. So that's something to always check out in terms of what it is that you're doing. And it, it's interesting because you've probably seen it in terms of RFPs, uh, that's request for proposals or things like that that come to you that say, if you use our, if you use our logo, you are subject to having your, your uh, proposal deleted. So be, be aware, be conscious, always look at what might be accepted and what might not be accepted at that particular time. So here's another testimonial that came through. And, and this is getting more in line with what we want from people. So number one, this individual explains who she is, what she does. Then she explains why she sought out me as a, a particular coach for her. So she explains why. That's going to say to other people, these are the kinds of things that you can expect from this individual. And then what it is that we did. Now, we set goals. We broke those goals down. We figured out the path. We offered the perspective, et cetera. And then she goes on to say, you know, why? Can't excuse, uh, can't excuse herself, but being held accountable is an important aspect. Now, for this particular individual, one of the things that we did, you know, and I, I would go on and explain this in different situations, but one of the things we did was that we had a five-year plan. The five-year plan was, one of the things that was in it was to get to this individual's retirement property. So that was a five-year plan. Year five, retirement property, because of the various kinds of things that we put into, uh, into place, the retirement property was able to come in year one. So this did not address that because year one hadn't yet occurred, but that's the kind of thing. Then you go back to your client and you say, hey, you know, can we address this? Can we look at a different testimonial? Again, back to have they accepted the fact? Have they um, done something? And are they willing to make that difference? Or do I need to write it for them and send it off and see what comes back? So key questions. What's the problem? Why did you choose me? What did I do for you? How was your experience? And what's the results? Now, think about it. What is the most important thing that you can actually have here? The results. And that's what you always want to see is the results, a really critical aspect. Now, one of the testimonials that I got back was super, super short. And I use it over and over and over. I did not put it on here. It is so short that uh, there, there's no point in putting it on here. It was, Sherry doesn't cost us money. She makes us money. Very short. And depending on what I need and where I need it, that one comes out regularly to be used. So here's another one. Testimonial, okay? Nothing was working for this individual. She was going through COVID uh, with family as well as other illnesses all kinds of things being a challenge introduced to Sherry. So that's how she came about connecting with me and then went on in terms of some of the kinds of things that we were doing together. And then the result, 5,000% increase in a very, very short time. Because in this case, what we figured out was she had the wrong audience. Her target audience was not the right one for what she wanted to do. Once she figured that out, we were off to the races. So really quite, 
quite valuable in terms of what is it that we need to look at and what do we want to focus on? And where do you put it? This is really important. You can put it anywhere, it doesn't matter. But always make sure that it's front and center in the sense. No, when you look at your website, do you have something that's close to the front of the website that has a testimonial on it that is going to let people know what you can do for them? Some people put it on a sidebar right on the first page of their website. Terrific. Then you can also have an individual separate segment where you list a bunch of testimonials. Now, remember what I said about photos, and, and you'll laugh at this. I just had a new website done. I went in and checked it all, and the photos on it, I have no idea where they came from, but not one photo matched the individual. Like, whoa, that could be a real problem. So don't use photos if you don't have the right ones. It's rather important. Um, on your landing pages, we're all getting quite comfortable using landing pages. On every landing page, you want to have some testimonials so that people can see the kinds of things that you do. And remember what I said, you don't have to use the entire testimonial. You can use a portion of it that fits that particular landing page program that you are promoting or, or topic or product, whatever it happens to be. And you can use them in blog posts, you can use them in case studies, uh, in social media, any of those kinds of things. Even when you're giving out a free gift, you can place that on a page if the free gift is coming via email, you can place it within just a little card or some such thing within something. When I'm giving away my book, I often put my, my business card in my book. And sometimes I will print out some testimonials from people who have also read and used my book and what does it mean? What is it there for you? Be conscious, be aware in terms of all the kinds of things that are going to make a difference for the people who are looking at it. Because the testimonial isn't for you. The testimonial is for the people that you want to attract in terms of your particular business. And it doesn't matter who it is that's going to give it to you. That's A-OK. -okay. And then always consider your SEOs. Search engine optimization. Whatever your SEO is, be sure that if you are writing a testimonial for yourself that you are going to send to somebody, make sure you include those words in it. If they are words that you want to use in it and you are asking somebody verbally for the testimonial, perhaps you want to share with them. These are some of the words that might be helpful to you. And then give them four or five words that you would like to see in the testimonial. Chances are they will pick up on the words that you gave them because it's much easier than thinking about those words for themselves. And apparently the SEO does get 45% more traffic in Google's algorithm. So that's something that you will want to use, that you will want to make sure that you have in terms of building things. So Roger, you mentioned earlier that we might be done more quickly than normal. These are the kinds of things that I think are important for us in terms of looking at what testimonials give. And just to wrap up, there's nothing more valuable in my estimation than testimonials. No, that's not true. I guess more valuable would be exactly the referrals, right? But testimonials are a way of getting referrals. And when you're talking to a prospective client, one of the things that you say, right? This reminds me of a situation where, and then you go back to a possible case study, but you can use that from the testimonial element as well. 
Now we know what a testimonial that's worth using is, right? You've got five basic questions that you want to ask those individuals. And in fact, if you want, I can send you the, the list and uh, actually a little blurb that you could use in terms of asking for a testimonial. So I've got that available for you just uh, as we wrap up here. But the, the questions in terms of the testimonial for us to get to, you know, what is it that uh, brought you to us, right? What's, what's the problem? And I'm just looking here in terms to make sure that I get all five right. The problem, why me? And then what did I do for you? And what was your experience? What was the feeling, right? Because it's that, those feeling words that are the ones that really gra grab other people as well as the final words, which are, right? What was the result? What did I get out of this? How did it help my business? How did it help me personally? Whatever it happens to be. And then we talked about how to get those testimonials. Ask for them because most of us don't ask. We just assume that if somebody's happy, they will actually participate and get something for us. Uh -uh, not necessarily the case. Ask. It's just like asking for the business, right? If you walk out the door and you assume that you might get the business, no. You ask for a yes, you ask for a no. I, I get a little more pushy. I say a, a maybe doesn't cut it. A yes or a no. And the same kind of thing, will you give me a testimony? Yes, okay. And then where do we place the testimonials? Any place where you possibly can. And if you are purchasing ads, one of the key things to do is include a testimonial in that ad. So it might mean a little more dollars and cents to create a bigger ad, but the testimonials are so, so relevant and so, so valuable there. So any questions that people might have? Uh, I have a question and it relates to Jason's earlier question about what should he charge as a keynote speaker? Uh -huh. uh, I, I am now always asking an EIN speaker if they have a collection of testimonials assembled in one little video. Mm -hmm. uh, I find that very helpful to get a diverse array of opinions. Uh, yes, they're all complementary, but they're all they all say things in a different way. Yes. And so by having that. Um, what do you call it, a compendium, uh, all captured in one video link. It's a very convenient way to share that link with uh, an interested person, and then they can hear from a number of different people about the merits of, uh, in this case, uh, me or you, as the case might be. A, a very good point. And, and it's the same idea as having a sheet of testimonials, the old printed ones, one after the other that you put on your website so that they're there and the visual ones are just as valuable. That is something that I have not used because the ones that I've asked for, I didn't give parameters to and I got these things that I can't use. And so, yes, go ahead, ask for them. If you don't ask, you don't get. But you might even, if you're in the same city or you could use Zoom to get those testimonials these days as well. Philip has a question. Uh, I am a digital marketer for science and technology. There is a science nonprofit. I would like to offer a free service in exchange for a testimonial. Mm -hmm. They are a 501c3 charity. They can benefit a lot from the promotion I can give them, but I don't want to couch in commercial terms, how should I handle this? Okay, I'm interpreting the question. So I, I believe what you're asking is, how do I ask for the exchange of my free service and the testimonial? Am I interpreting that right? That's how I interpret it as well. Yes, well, says okay. Philip. And so at the beginning, when you are conversing with them and saying you're a nonprofit, I would love to help you out. And so I am prepared to give you A, B, and C. And in return, 
what I would expect from you would be a testimonial that I can take and use with other nonprofit organizations. So you say it right up front. Let them know what it is you are giving. And in return, I would expect this. And sometimes I go the, the uh, not in return, I expect this, but you do this for me and I'll do this for you. You know, so that back and forth, it depends on the language because some nonprofits are very high level and some nonprofits are pretty low level. So you want to match the words to the individuals that you're talking with. Did that help? <clears throat> Sherry, uh, what if uh, uh, what if he said, um, if what I provide you meets or exceeds your expectations, would it be OK for for you to agree to provide me with a testimonial. Yes, I find that one a little couchy. <laughs> I would straight up ask for it. And I might say, I, I like your words if I'm sat if you're satisfied, if I've exceeded, but I would just leave it at the satisfied. If you're happy with what you've got, then give me the other. Because if you talk, start talking about exceed, then, okay, I, you didn't exceed, Sherry, so why am I going to give you a testimonial? So I, I wouldn't give them both options there. Okay, we, we have a question. Uh, Mandeep, how many testimonials would you say would be enough on one's website? Okay, my response? There's never enough. If you've got 50 of them, put all 50 because somebody may want to go and look at them. Now, the discrepancy here is this. You might want to, what? Put them into bundles. So look at the ones about product X. Look at the ones about product Y. Look at the ones about this portion of my service. Look at the ones about the other portions of my service. So you might have four or five different bundles and that way, the more you've got the merrier because you've got them all separated into various areas. But it's, a, it's amazing to me the number of people who will scroll down and read and continue to read through. And so from that perspective, I, I do say you've never got enough because you have no idea what the person is looking for when they are reading those testimonials. Mauricio asks, am I correct in assuming that if you're going to provide a sample testimonial to help someone create their own, you need to have a few testimonials under your belt so you know what they probably can use? Not, not necessarily, no. When you're looking to get testimonials from people and write them, you have to know what you want them to say, not what others have said. So be very conscious about going back to your SEO. And you may have somebody who's helping you with that. If somebody is not helping you, then think in terms of going online and having a look for some of the key words that come up in your industry. And then choose out of those words, which ones are the most important words for you and take those most important words and think about how you are going to in, infiltrate those key words into a, a testimonial that you might send out. And each one might be different based on what it is that that particular client needs, if that makes any sense. Another question, Sherry, how long should a video testimonial be? Very short. And, and somebody addressed this earlier, and I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was, but talking about videos, and I think they said six seconds, uh, something like that, but uh, less than a minute. You don't want it long because people aren't going to pay attention too long. So less than a minute. And, and think about those testimonials, those written ones that I had there. How long did it take you to read it? It was seconds. It wasn't a minute. And therefore, have a whole bunch of them so that people can look at them and look at them quickly. Do, do you want to try and take a stab at uh, what, uh, what short means? 
uh, from my perspective? Yes. Okay. Uh, a short video is something in the vicinity of anywhere from 10 seconds to 15 seconds. Thank you. Uh, Mandy asks, should you get testimonials from different people who have worked with the same company? If that's applicable, yes. Sometimes you're only hired by one person, but if you are hired by more than one person, get testimonials from whomever it is. And sometimes when you're hired by one person, you are working with a multitude of others, yes. And if you can get them from peers, if you can get them from management, if you can get them from regular staff, you know, anybody at all, if you're de dealing with a family, mem different members of the family even. Jason has a odd problem. He has too many testimonials, but they're fake. He asks, how do you get fake testimonials off of a Google business page? Trolls that you don't know them. I got on nice, friendly and clean. Sounds like a restaurant. I can't answer that one. Maybe somebody else here can. I do not know how to get a testimonial off Google. Okay. Mandeep asks, consent form, how do, uh, how, uh, do I get from all of them? Uh, Mandeep is saying, do I get a consent form from everybody who gives a testimonial? Attempt to, yes. It just covers your butt in the future if you ever need it. And as I say, in all the years that I've been in business and all the years that I've gotten testimonials, I have never had anyone come back and question me, but I don't want it to happen. So, can, can anyone help Jason with uh, getting fake testimonials off his Google business page? Yeah, Jason, feel free to contact me. It's Kevin. I will. There is a process involved in doing this. It's not a straightforward thing, but you have to claim the business. If you have already claimed the business, then you have to work with their team. I'll help you with that. Kevin, can you type your uh, uh, coordinates into the chat? Yeah, I will. I will send it to Jason. Thank you. Yeah, private message, Jason. Great. Excellent. Sherry, would you like to make some concluding profound comment? Well, I'm not sure how profound, Roger, but if you haven't collected testimonials in the past, do so now and start thinking about doing it with every client that you have. Some will never give you anything. So collect all the ones that you absolutely can. And if you have to help them, I've got information here in terms of, of how you help them. So go back and have a relook at this in terms of, of asking. It's really, really important that you get them because they will help you sell your services, sell your product. That's what people pay attention to are testimonials. They want them from the audience. Now, I mentioned earlier, just going back to, you know, you don't want anybody to look bad when they post a testimony. So sometimes you have to clean them up a little bit, but it's okay to have the odd spelling word or something in it that says, this is real. This isn't something that is phony. It's not artificial. So enjoy, get those out there because it'll help you build your business. Sherry, on behalf of uh, EIN's 73,000 members, uh, I thank you hugely. Uh, in, in, uh, in, our 12, in our 12 years of existence, we've never actually had a speaker speaking on the art and science of getting testimonials. Uh, and, and they're really crucial. They make the difference between a yes and a no. Yes. So uh, uh, thank you hugely for addressing this topic, uh, addressing it with, uh, with uh, as much clarity as you have brought. Uh, I don't think anyone will, um, will feel that they are hard done by, by investing the hour they have spent by being with, uh, with you this evening. So thank you hugely. Most welcome.